a toxic life on the ocean waves. How just a few ships can create more emissions than all the world's cars. And plastics, not so fantastic. New efforts to tackle one of the planet's biggest polluters. I'm Dana Lewis. This is Insight. Welcome to Insight. They are the giants of the ocean carrying tens of thousands of tons of cargo or thousands of fare paying passengers from one side of the world to the other. But the container vessels, tankers and cruise ships that sail our seas are also giant polluters and scientists say it's not just marine life that's being put at risk. There's big, there's enormous, and then there's the harmony of the seas. When the largest cruise ship in the world chugged into the Southampton port in England, it was an orchestrated tugboat-driven waterborne ballet through the mists of fireboat fountains. There's a reason the ship is divided into seven neighborhoods, including Central Park and the Boardwalk, because it literally is a floating town. Almost 3,000 staterooms. 6,780 guests. Supersized, gargantuan. These ships just keep getting larger. But what emerges from those smokestacks on ships around the world has raised some serious concerns. On the docks of Southampton, we met with Colin McQueen, a clean air campaigner in the shadow of the big ships that pull into this port. He complains his partner has asthma and that the air quality is a serious health concern because of ships burning low-grade, dirty diesel fuel. Some of these cruise ships, like the uh, navigator of the seas behind us, that's probably got the power demand of a, a 50,000 population town. So it's got air conditioning, electrics, you name it, people there, that is power hungry. So that is pumping out a lot of toxins, a lot of pollution as it sits in harbour. Once it goes beyond the international limit, then they switch to um, a cruder form of oil, which they call bunker fuel. So they're not only supersized, but so is the pollution they cause. A ship like the Harmony has two four-story, 16-cylinder engines burning up to 4,900 liters of fuel per hour, 249,000 liters of fuel per day. One cruise ship can emit more sulfur than several million cars. There's more nitrous oxide emissions than all the car traffic passing through a medium-sized town. More particulate emissions than thousands of London buses from just one of these. It's a problem because we have hospitals that are bursting at the seams with people with uh, asthma. COPD, all kinds of lung-related diseases. It's a problem because we've got young children breathing in what is effectively contaminated air into the schoolrooms themselves. Many schools are not very far away from the docks, so there are days in which those children should really not be allowed out into the playground. And when they're not at sea, in ports around the world, ships run engines for power. And environmental groups say it's a serious hazard. It is really important to address these, the, the shipping emissions, both from when they're out at sea, which contributes to the overall background, but probably most importantly, when they're in port, because they're actually where people are living and breathing the, the air. And, and as air can move around, clearly, you know, the, the exhaust emissions of the ship, if it's running its engines in port, will affect local people's health. Container ships are also belching polluters. The Mole Triumph carries 20,000 containers. It's 396 meters long, almost half a kilometer. One massive container ship can in one year emit cancer and asthma causing pollutants equivalent to 50 million cars. Worldwide, there are 90,000 vessels. A lot of the container shipping business is suffering. So upgrading fleets to be more environmentally sound isn't happening. But the rich cruise lines say they are changing. We do have to do a lot with the fuel we use at, sh at shore and within 12 miles of the shore. We use very low sulfur content and when we're on the high seas we can use a higher sulfur content. 
but the International Maritime Organization, which governs sea transport, is actually putting in place restrictions where all ships will have to comply with lower level sulfur fuels by 2025. Friends of the Earth accuse cruise lines of failing to install technologies that could further reduce pollution. And of hiding dirty practices from the public by refusing to be transparent about what environmental practices are being followed. Air pollution from international shipping accounts for 50,000 premature deaths per year in Europe alone, say experts. Fifteen of the world's largest ships are said to create more pollution than all the cars in the world. And that's creating waves in more ports than just Southampton. I'm joined by environmental journalist Fiona Harvey. Fiona, you've actually written about this as well, I think. Have you not? That's right. And look, I'm amazed in researching 15 of the world's largest ships account for more pollution than all the cars combined. Somebody asked me about that in the newsroom the other day, and I had to say it like three times, and they had trouble digesting it, and I think I still do too. Yes, well, partly it's a result of the kind of fuel that these enormous ships use. Um, as we just heard, it's a particularly nasty form uh, of diesel that's, that's often used. Um, it's very heavy, um, it's very high in pollutants, uh, it's high in things like sulfur that are generally cleaned out uh, of the fuels, the cleaner fuels that we use in our cars. It's kind of the bottom of the barrel of the refinery, is it? It is. It's kind of the scrapings at the bottom of the barrel, the thing that, that can't be used for anything else. The, whole, the fuel is not heavily refined, high sulfur content, a lot of sulfur oxide, mm -hmm. uh, but cars really burn because they burn a much more refined fuel. I mean, they don't necessarily put out sulfur oxides like that. Is it a fair comparison? That's right, because um, if car engines used this kind of fuel, they would only get to the end of the street because they clog up so quickly. So it's in the manufacturer's interest uh, to use much cleaner fuel. Uh, but with ships' engines, they're so vast, they can cope with this dirty fuel, and they've been built to cope with this dirty fuel. So they use it, and it's cheaper. Why don't they change? Why aren't they not bringing in new technologies? I mean, this is not yesterday's revolution. It's been around the last five to ten years, although it's getting a lot more traction from environmental groups who say, look, these guys are monstrous polluters, they have to clean up. Well, this is the thing. I mean, for a start, it's cheaper for the ships to carry on the way they are using the cheap, dirty fuel, but also they don't come under very much pressure. For instance, international shipping doesn't fall under uh, international greenhouse gas regulations like the, uh, the Paris Agreement or the, the Kyoto Protocol. Um, so it's excluded from that. Um, it's also excluded from a lot of other regulations that govern individual countries because ships, by their nature, they go between countries. So, so as they're off coast, offshore, some say 12 miles, say, some say 200 miles. They're supposed to be reducing the emission as they pull towards a port. Is that right? That's right. They are supposed to be. Um, so there are sw uh, slightly cleaner fuels that they can uh, switch to. Um, but it's difficult to regulate this because, you know, ships by their nature, they're right in the middle of the sea. It's hard to, to really tell exactly what they're doing at any point in time. Exactly. They leave port and once they're out there in the middle of the night, they can do whatever they want to a large degree. And they have been caught. For instance, there's a, a court decision in the U.S. last year on dumping. This isn't fuel burn, but it, it did involve diesel that had been recycled through some kind of magic pipe. It was illegal dumping and they were fined to, to the tune, I think, of about $400 million. So once they're out there in the middle of the night, and that's just one case, how many others are there, do you think? Well, we don't know uh, is the simple answer, but we can uh, extrapolate uh, from the few cases that, that have been found um, that actually the problem is, is probably a lot more widespread. Um, the difficulty is the regulations, there are regulations governing many of the aspects of these ships' pollution. Um, it's the enforcement of them that's very difficult. And if you imagine to enforce it um, requires not just uh, the ships to comply, but it, it requires a lot of uh, monitoring, surveillance and so on. Who's going to do that? The Coast Guard, the Navy? Especially in international waters. Exactly. And in most countries, um, you know, the, the, the forces that might have been able to enforce this um, are either busy with other things or have been cut down. Let's give the shipping industry some benefit of the doubt. For instance, container ships 
have been on the rocks, and I don't want to bring up a pun, but I mean, they, they have been devastated by the economy to some degree. Many of them are, are kind of on their last leg, some of these old ships. Who is going to pay for them to upgrade? Who is who's going to pay for them to clean up? Well, ultimately, it has to be consumers uh, because we're the ones who are receiving the goods. Um, we, you know, we, we pay um, for the, these things to be shipped around the world. Um, but of course, that's a very difficult thing to do, especially in a context where you know there are lots of other price pressures. So, frankly, a lot of uh, ship owners um, actually have uh, an incentive to just carry on with these ships until they give out. What about the cruise lines? I mean, they, they are much more public relations savvy. They depend on public support and the public coming on board. The, the public increasingly is reading about this pollution. Do you think there's now incentive for them to start cleaning up? And yeah. may I ask, how do they clean up? What's the alternative to this, this low-grade diesel? Well, they can have better adapted engines and they can use higher grade uh, fuels. They can use cleaner fuels. There's, there's really no reason why they, they shouldn't if they wanted to. Um, I think that uh, one of the, the, the ways in which this industry is going to uh, be encouraged to clean up is through consumer pressure. No one wants to think that if they're going on an expensive cruise, um, that that cruise is actually polluting docks. And as we've just heard, you know, children's lungs, you know, from children who live near where these uh, ships are docked, um, you know, children are being damaged. No one wants to think that their holiday is hurting someone. Right, and some of these cruises are advertised as cruises into nature, come and see Alaska, for instance. Exactly, or, or the Antarctic or wherever it may be. Yes, um, and so you have uh, people on board, passengers, who are probably even more ecologically conscious than the average. So, yeah, there, there are incentives out there for people to clean up, but the problem is that this is very much an ignored problem. And when cruise ship passengers are out in the middle of the sea enjoying themselves, probably the last thing on their mind is what the ship is doing to pollute the ocean. Fiona, thank you. Please stay with us. This is Insight coming up a new way to tackle plastic pollution.